Welcome to IAYTD. Today we're discussing the World's Fair. I remember watching Men in Black way back in the day, and the climax of the movie featured a structure that was built for the 1964 World's Fair in New York. I didn't quite know what that meant, so let's dive into it now. Imagine before the internet existed. Imagine before a lot of current technology existed. There wasn't a way to really share ideas as easily as it is today. So the idea of a World's Fair began when industrialism began to sweep the developed world. It began in Paris with the earliest recorded event called the French Industrial Exposition in 1844. This was the biggest event of this type, but was actually the 10th expo that France held, each one becoming larger and larger. It was a place for French developers and inventors to come together and share ideas. Following Paris's example, London hosted the quote-unquote Great Exhibition in 1851, this was the first global exposition, bringing great minds together from across the world. Expos like this began to pop up all over Europe and then slowly but surely across the globe. A committee came together to unify these events, called the Bureau International de Expositions, hereafter called the BIE. This group approves and recognizes these big exposition events. These fairs are generally split into three eras. The very first expos, called the Era of Industrialism, all focused on technological innovation. It gave scientists and inventors a platform to share state-of-the-art technology from around the world. Inventions like the telephone were introduced at these fairs. The second era is referred to as the Era of Cultural Exchange. They still focused on invention and innovation, but sought to use that as a venue for communicating with other cultures. Themes arose, like building the world of tomorrow. The 1964 New York World's Fair focused on peace through understanding. It was at this fair in 64 that the iconic spaceship-like buildings were built and then featured in Men in Black. The last and current era is referred to as the era of nation branding. It became about showcasing all the countries present, each one usually hosting a pavilion or area. They'd share cultural dishes and traditions, hoping to help improve their nation's image. The city that hosts the expos these days almost primarily cite positive image as their main reason for hosting. This is a huge cost though as countries must design and build their own pavilions. The biggest fairs are usually held five years apart, as they are quite a huge undertaking. These expos are meant to last around six months to give people a chance to attend, but the 1964 fair in New York actually lasted two years. Because of this, this fair is actually unrecognized by the BIE even though it's one of the largest in U.S. history. In between these big fairs, there are sometimes more specialized fairs that are smaller and might focus on a specific interest like travel or sustainability. Now sometimes these fairs exist for the six months and that's it, but other times they build a structure that stays there. The most prominent example is the Eiffel Tower built for an expo in 1889. In Seattle, both the Space Needle and the City Monorail were built for the 1962 World's Fair. The China Pavilion from 2010 in Shanghai has been transformed into the China Art Museum, now the largest art museum in all of Asia. Sometimes, an exhibit is moved successfully away from the fair. At the 1964 New York Fair, Walt Disney created a ride, which was a huge hit called It's a Small World, and he moved it to Disneyland immediately after, where it's still in operation. The most recent expo was in Milan in 2015. In the next few years, Kazakhstan will host the now-called Expo 2017, and Dubai and the Arab United Emirates will host in 2020. Some other interesting notes. The Pledge of Allegiance was first recited in school on the opening day of the Chicago World's Fair in 1892. As the Civil War was becoming a memory and America wanted to show off a united front to the world, in one of the only venues that they could at that time. Former U.S. President William McKinley was actually assassinated at the 1901 World's Fair in Buffalo. There were threats made, but McKinley went forward, saying that this chance to speak to the world about trade opportunities was a valuable moment. So those are some highlights. I apologize if the highlights are mostly United States-centric, so feel free to leave comments about more global highlights and cool structures left behind from the World Fairs from all over the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another What Is.